The question uh, today is, uh, is strange. Does antimatter fall up? And as you can see, the poor Newton uh, in front of an apple tree, and the apple is uh, going upwards. So it's not so common, but uh, this strange uh, title of the, the talk is, was used by CERN a few years ago. And uh, in fact, there are about 150 people at CERN working on this question, uh, trying to measure directly uh, the weight of antimatter, and in particular, uh, I could tell you more about what I did uh, about 27 years ago. About 15 years, uh, people tried to measure uh, the, the gravity on the antiproton, and then uh, I showed in 1996 with some other um, rather well-known researchers that uh, it was basically impossible. Uh, there are some uh, so-called historical experiments uh, we tried to use uh, protons and even electrons, and then we showed that it was uh, completely impossible. Uh, and that, that at that time, in '96, people tried to uh, devise uh, an experiment that would allow uh, to measure the action of uh, gravity, Earth's gravity, uh, that you know very well. And if you drop something, it falls down uh, with an acceleration of about 10 meters per second squared. Uh, and uh, but on uh, neutral antimatter, uh, that is anti-hydrogen, and that was a very b difficult program, which is only now arriving to completion. So first, uh, a little uh, quiz: uh, Do you know anything that falls up? Have you any uh, example of something falling up? Yes, it's a balloon. Yes, yes, that's a good, relatively good example. A helium balloon falls up. Yes, no, no, it's a good example. Uh, and in fact, then, of course, this poor helium balloon is not that uh, negatively massive and it has difficulty, but it falls up relatively uh, with an acceleration, except that uh, with the friction and the air, uh, it does not accelerate very long. It's a it limit velocity, which is relatively small. If you do the same in the superfluid helium, you put an electron, for example, the, uh, the superfluid helium does not like, at very low temperature, does not like to be perturbed by something external with a charge, and it creates a, a small bubble of vacuum around the electron. Then this electron, uh, becomes uh, negatively uh, mass, uh, uh, an electron with negative mass compared to the surrounding medium, and it accelerates, and you could say uh, it accelerates with 10 meters per second squared, like uh, if, uh, no, except that it's not true, it's 20, it's twice. Uh, mm. Okay, that's difficult. So le let's move to the, the next uh, slide, which is slightly complicated. So this is the beginning, this is now. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the present view of the history of the universe. We think that the universe was very dense and very extremely hot at the beginning of its history about 40 billion years ago. Uh, here, it's a lot of light, very hot. Uh, but then the, the history of the universe in the standard model is very strange. Uh, since the theory puts all, air, all the mass of the object above zero, positive, then you have a huge de deceleration, it's a very small amount of time, and then since you don't understand the universe, if it's, uh, it's completely clumpy, uh, uh, you need a s some phase that you don't really understand, of, uh, it's called inflation accelerated expansion, but which should start uh, and last for only 0 0.34 with 0 and 1 the box second. It's so absolutely fantastically small uh, amount of time. Then it must again decel uh, decelerate very strongly, quiet down for a few billion years, and now it's supposed to accelerate again.
And if even some people say, well, it does not really work. I will add a second phase of early dark energy somewhere in between, uh, uh, which to me is, uh, uh, you know, that the time where people were considering that the Earth was the center of the universe and the sun was orbiting uh, around the Earth. But then it didn't work really well for the planets, in particular Mars which uh, went one direction and then sometimes went backwards. So they added uh, what we call epicycles, circles inside circles. And that's about what is uh, early dark energy, probably. So if you look at the sky, at the last time the universe was a star, it's extremely uniform, much more uniform than this, about 2.7 degree Kelvin, which is absolute minus 270 uh, approximately. Uh, but these small uh, wiggles at the surface uh, are extremely small. Uh, typically, one over 100,000, the, the difference. So you, by the eye, you would not see it. It was a tremendously uh, difficult experiment. Uh, with this, in principle, you can answer the question of the ultimate fate of the universe. It's not closed. Uh, we know that it's not closed. It's very extremely likely open, which is it will continue to uh, expand indefinitely and probably just at the limit of recollapsing, uh, except that now it seems that it is uh, accelerated expansion. And this accelerated expansion was completely unexpected until, let's say, mid-90s. At that time, there was a problem that uh, the universe that people considered, called the Einstein de Sitter universe, with just the amount of matter to between uh, uh, recollapse and uh, eternal expansion, it has the defect that it had uh, an age of about uh, 9 billion years, which was smaller than the age of the oldest stars that you can see, which is basically impossible. The, the universe must be older than the stars in it, huh? clearly. So uh, there was something wrong, and then people tried to look at the geometry of the universe uh, at very large distance. As you can see, we knew already that the, very probably the age of the universe was more than 10 billion years. So you have to look, to look at the geometry of the universe, you have to look at least to 5 billion years light years. Uh, and this was very difficult until the mid-90s again, where people look at certain type of supernovae, which uh, when they explode, they are more luminous than all the stars in the universe for a short amount of time. Mm. Uh, they have become extremely luminous and relatively reproducibly, which means that you can use them uh, what we call standard ca uh, candles, 100 watts uh, um, standard uh, luminosity uh, candles, except that it's a lot more of watts. Mm. So let's look. Um, it seems surprising probably to some of you, but as I said, more than one star out of two is in a double system, double star system. So you have usually uh, normal star and if you have a compact star around as you know the, the sun emits a lot of wind uh, this wind uh, falls on the compact star and after a while the poor compact star cannot stand anymore its own weight increased weight and then uh, makes a first collapse and then comes back uh, with a huge explosion and that's a supernova and with these people uh, uh, get a very strange composition of the universe, which I think is not correct, but that's the present stage. About 70 something, 72% uh, probably today, uh, repulsive energy, uh, repulsive dark energy, because we don't know exactly what it is. Unknown dark matter and the normal matter is only 4.5%, which is strange. And my hypothesis with some other researchers was that maybe this was due to antimatter. That's a very strange idea, 
Uh, and this is taken from the movie Angels and Demons, where a son, the poor son, is uh, supposed to have uh, made one fourth gram of antimatter, made much less than one million uh, 0 0.50 and one uh, gram of uh, antimatter for 60 years. Uh, so don't worry. But still, one gram of antimatter will wipe out uh, most of Paris. And in the film, the movie, there is a parachute and they put that completely unrealistic and because they would be flattened everywhere. Mm. Okay, but still, uh, this antimatter exists, except that we don't see it in our vicinity. Uh, what I want you to keep in mind is that antimatter is negatively, at least in the theory, looks like a backwards going backwards in time or which is equivalent also having negative energy because that's the same transformation in physics uh, uh, changing the sign of time is also changing the sign of energy at least in the uh, non uh, even in the relativistic equations so this was found by Paul Dirac in 1929 or 30. At the time, it was not discovered uh, experimentally. So you, you had this uh, strange thing that uh, the equation said, once you have a particle with mass m, you have also another particle with mass minus m. And also, the charge must be reversed. If you have a charge of uh, one electron, then there must be uh, the charge of minus one electron and uh, what it is, and then it was discovered in the cosmic rays. That was relatively easy because uh, it was uh, inertial mass. What is much more difficult is to measure the gravitational mass. It's only now that we can make the measurement, about 90 years after uh, Dirac. And what we are studying is this, what happens when you mix this uh, negative mass and positive mass uh, components, matter and antimatter, and when you look at the collapse, typically this is a, a big cluster of galaxies, so let's say one million uh, light years, and I will show you an animation of this. You see matter collapse as usual, makes uh, very dense stars, uh, galaxies, etc. And then uh, you have antimatter which spreads out, so as I said, Antimatter is a kind of double universe. Huh? You, you have ordinary matter, you know it, protons, neutrons, electrons. And then, uh, as I said, uh, Paul Dirac found that uh, when you make uh, this relativistic, the, try to make it according to the theory of Einstein, you must have a second world which looks like uh, a, a kind of matter which will have uh, the opposite energy and will then annihilate with uh, ordinary matter. And it does annihilate. Hmm? Uh, so, uh, as I said, when you put uh, one gram of matter and one gram of antimatter, it's a lot of energy, uh, typically eight nuclear bombs above uh, Hiroshima or Nagasaki. So it's, that's a lot of energy. Uh, this antimatter is well detected, except that it's not in our environment. Obviously, otherwise we would be dead. Uh, there is not a lot of antimatter in our vicinity. Dark energy is something which has been invented to try to understand what is this accelerated or repulsive energy that we observe since the mid-90s, but basically uh, 1998 when these people measure the supernovae, this type of very reproducible supernovae. But we don't know what it is. It's just a word to describe our ignorance. And dark matter is a mo almost the same. Although I'll spend 15 years looking for it, uh, it may not, not exist. Just to finish, this is an ongoing uh, search. We don't know yet what is the weight of antimatter. We don't know yet whether it's the origin of uh, what we call the dark matter. It looks extremely promising. What we did the last three years uh, really explain why you have the impression to have dark matter when there is none. It's just due to the geometrical repartition between matter and antimatter. And it gives you then the impression that you have uh, additional matter. But it's just uh, the fact that you don't see this very diffuse 
uh, anti-hydrogen and anti-helium, anti which is uh, very far away from you. Typically from the Milky Way's re relatively large object, it's typically uh, at least 300,000 light years from you. Mm. Uh, so don't be afraid, antimatter is not so close. So for me, uh, I, if you wish, I can just end with uh, this, how it all started. For me, it started in the mid-80s, uh, uh, because I, I couldn't understand the argument about uh, instability, energy conservation, where if you have anti-gravity. And this proved to be extremely important in the following... Uh, uh, but about the same time, there was a guy who got the Nobel Prize in between, uh, Kipson, who was asked by um, Carl Sagan, the well-known, uh, the, the guy who was doing the, the scenario for the film Contact with Josie Foster, and then uh, uh, helped also for the scenario of Interstellar, which uh, is m much more recent, and where you have uh, the question by Carl Sagan was, uh, is it possible in nature to have a wormhole? A wormhole is a shortcut. Let's say you have a door between here and the moon. Huh? You, you describe the geometry of space. Well, in, in some uh, books you have uh, like, uh, I don't know, uh, Hyperion, uh, Hyperion uh, you have many of these doors in space time. Is it possible in physics to have such doors, some wormholes? Uh, like uh, holes uh, make, which are shortcuts in, um, in space-time. And the answer is, if you can describe it with geometry, and you can, because you, may, you can make a drawing uh, of this situation, then it must exist in general relativity. Except that you have to violate the positivity of energy, you have to accept negative pressure, negative mass, negative energy somewhere, which is called exotic matter. So uh, then people try to look at, because people said, oh, this is impossible, it will generate a paradox or global instability. And after a while, people realize that that's not true. There are no paradoxes, there is no, probably not big in instability, not not much more than what we have already in our universe, which cannot be stable. And uh, with this uh, came the reflection about this repulsive gravity, which found its uh, physical implementation in 98, with the discovery of what we call dark energy, but which can also be something uh, which is only the action of antimatter, very dispersed, that we basically we almost don't see and which is there uh, over 50% uh, of the our universe okay so that's it